Hey guys, welcome to my patch 10.8 TFT guide. Today we're going to be going over the top comps in TFT 10.8 as of right now. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Now for the first comp we are going to be looking at, we are going to be looking at the Star Guardian Sorcerer's build. This comp has been dominating 10.8 ever since the patch hit, so today I'm going to show you how to build it. Now the main carry for this comp is going to be a Syndra. You're going to want to build some sort of damage item on her, Jeweled Gauntlet or Rabadons would be nice, Seraph's Embrace and Chalice of Favor. You can swap out the Chalice of Favor for another Seraph's Embrace or you can swap out the Seraph's Embrace for another Chalice of Favor. Those items are interchangeable, whatever suits your comp. Now what this does is this allows Syndra to cast her spell over and over again, essentially becoming a machine gun and wiping out every enemy unit. Now, the way her targeting works is that she will target the enemy with the highest health, and that's where Nico comes in. Essentially, Nico's ulti is an AoE damage ulti that will damage the front line, and then the highest health enemy carries will be the ones that Syndra targets with her ulti, and this essentially wipes out the team slowly but surely, and essentially this comp has been dominating since, and this is how it's been dominating. Now for the side carry, the Nico, what you're going to want to build on her is you're going to want to build a GA, and you're going to want to build an Ionic Spark. Ionic Spark why? Because it reduces the magic resist of the enemy team that casts spells, which is essentially the whole enemy team, and GA just so she can get a guaranteed ulti off. Now this comp pretty much guarantees a top 4 as long as if you get the Seraph's Embrace and the Chalice of Favor on the Syndra, really strong, really OP right now, make sure you abuse it in this 10.8 patch. For the next comp, we're going to be looking at 6 Dark Star. This comp is very strong right now. I do have the Javan in, but you're eventually going to want to replace it with the Xerath as it provides source for buff with the Lux and is also just a stronger unit overall. So make sure you take that into account. Now, for the two main carries of this build, you're going to have Jin and Shaco both work out really well as a carry. When you build Jin, you're going to want to put a GA on him just in case he dies, he can get revived again and just keep shooting enemies down. Last Whisper, a lot of people have been running Vanguards lately so Last Whisper really counters that really hard as well as the fact that people are also running Bramble Vest so it's really good for that as well and Runan's Hurricane just so that he can target more enemies than one. Some people like to build IE instead of the Last Whisper that works out too but it's also a bit too much on the damage just because of the fact that the way 6 Dark Star works is that every time an ally dies you're going to get 35 attack damage and since Jin is in the back line he is likely going to be one of the last units to die. So by the time there are three Dark Star left, he already has plus 100 AD, which is insane, which is no need for the IE, because IE only boosts damage. Meanwhile, I like the Last Whisper because it cuts through that armor. So if someone has a Bramble Vest, if someone's running four Vanguard, you can still chomp them down. Now for the Shaco carry, you're going to want to put a GA on him just so he can have that second lease on life just in case he gets pummeled down. And then for the second item, you're going to want a BT. This item allows him to get full health off every ulti and essentially just keep spamming that ulti to get full health and he can essentially 1v9 a team. Now for the third item of Shaco, it is going to be optional depending on what you're going up against. If you're going up against magic damage, I suggest the Dragon's Claw. If you're going up against another Jin Shaco sort of team, you're going to want Bramble Vest. Optimize the item so that way your Shaco could do more damage and last longer in the battle. Just a quick note, if you do get AP items, make sure you save them for the Xerath, as Xerath ulti stuns as long as he kills the target that he's cast his spell on. So having optimal AP damage items allows him to stun more units, which is better for your comp. So for the next build we are going to be looking at, it is the six cybernetics with Echo and Irelia as your two main carries, and then Lucian as a sort of mini carry in the early to mid game. Now, what you're going to want to do in the early game is get a red buff on Lucian, pair him up with another blaster such as Graves, which is easy to get in the early game, and just let the Lucian go to town as the blaster buff allows him to proc red buff on multiple enemy units at a time. This should get you through the early and mid game. Now, as you transition into the late game, you're going to start to use Irelia and Echo as carries. What you're going to want to put on Irelia is BF Sword items. I prefer IE, as it allows her to kill the enemy units and keep procking her ulti. But BT also works, Seraph's Embrace also works on her as well. Now, the way you're going to want to optimize Echo or itemize Echo is that you're going to want to put Static Shivs, AP Damage items, and a GA on him. The reason for this is because of the fact that GA allows him to get his ulti off, as well as the fact that AP damage items allow his ulti hits to do more damage, and static shiv procs with his ulti, so it works out really well to damage the whole enemy team. There are three variations of this comp depending on what units you can get, and I'll show you each one. The first one is the one with the Ezreal and the Shen as your two additional units, 
Ezreal provides Blaster with the Lucian, Shen provides Blademaster with the Irelia and the Fiora, as well as the fact that Ezreal and Shen together provide Chrono. Now for the next variation of this comp, we're going to be looking at the Thresh and Shen variation. Thresh provides Mana Reaver with the Irelia, stopping the enemy team from ulting. Shen provides Blademaster with Irelia and Fiora. And on top of that, Thresh and Shen provide a Chrono buff. This variation of the comp is really strong against enemy teams with large ultimates, so just take advantage of that when you do get the Thresh. Now for the third variation of this comp, we are going to be looking at the Kale and the Misfortune as the additional units. This is by far the strongest version of this comp. However, Misfortune and Kale are both highly contested units. So if you cannot get them, I recommend you go for the first two variations I've already talked about. Now, this variation of the comp still has the Blaster effect with the Misfortune and the Lucian, still has the Blade Master trait with the Kale, Irelia, and the Fiora. But what really makes this variation of the comp shine is the Valkyrie buff between the Kale and the Misfortune. What this does is it allows them to crit anything or any enemy unit below 40% health. And this allows the Misfortune ulti to wipe out the enemy team as long as they're below 40% health, which is easy with the cybernetic damage that your team is going to be doing. If you're going this variation of the comp and you have an item on every other champion in the stick cybernetics, I want you to build tier items on the Misfortune as it allows her to ulti faster. Seraph's Embrace, Spear of Shojin, and then maybe one damage item with like Morello Rabadons should be fine on her. Now for the next build we're going to be looking at, it is the Chrono Kale build. This essentially takes that third variation of the six cybernetics buff and takes advantage of that Valkyrie and uses Misfortune and Kale as your carries. How this comp works is essentially it uses four Chrono, which buffs 35 attack speed every four seconds and essentially buffs the Kale to insane amounts of attack speed to the point where she can just solo wipe out the enemy team by herself. Now the way you're going to want to build Kale is one with a GA just in case she gets pummeled down by an AoE ulti or by an infiltrator, then with a rage blade which allows her to attack even faster with every auto attack and with the rapid fire cannon because the way Kale's ulti works is essentially it is like an AoE auto attack and what the rapid fire cannon does it expands the range of this AoE auto attack to even further or maybe even off the board and that is really strong and allows us to just target the whole enemy team with their auto attacks. So rapid fire cannon and GA are very essential and rage blade is just to optimize her attack speed. For the Misfortune, you're going to want to build a Seraph's Embrace on her just so she can ulti as fast as possible and the Morellos to stop healing of the enemy team. Now what you can do for the early game of this composition is replace the Thresh and the Wukong with the Twisted Fate and a Caitlyn as getting the Thresh and the Wukong in the early game is impossible so you can replace them later as you move on as well as the fact that you want to focus on picking up the Zaya. Zaya is the only unit that you can get in the early game so make sure you pick her up when your levels 1 to 2 and 3. This build does have a lot of little synergies with the four Chrono between the Thresh, Shen, Wukong and Ezreal, Mana Reaver between the Thresh and the Kassadin, Celestial between the Kassadin and the Zaya, Valkyrie with the Misfortune and with the Kale, Blade Master, etc. So it is very confusing to run this if you are going it for the first time. So make sure you have a website like this open. I use Mobilytics because it helps me just optimize my gameplay and just think about the items that I really like to run on each unit. So make sure you have a website open like this when you're playing it for the first time just to make sure you don't get confused and accidentally build the wrong units and end up losing. Now for the next comp we're going to be looking at, it is the Protectors. Now essentially how you build this comp is you go for the Protectors first. So you go for Rakan, Xin Zhao, Jarvan and Nico. And then after that, when you hit level 6, you put in the Karma and the Sonar. And then when you hit level 7 and 8, you're going to put in the Lulu and the Soraka. Now the way you play this comp is you try and save your gold, buy the early game protectors as fast as possible, and then as soon as you hit level 5, naturally, don't level up to it, you save up your gold, and every time you go above 50, you roll down to try and find Rakan and Xin Zhao, and essentially you're going to want to 3 star both of these units. The main carry of this build is the Xin Zhao, so you want to try and 3 star him as fast as possible, and then when you do, put a Dragon's Claw, a Bramble Vest, and a titanic resolve on him. Now, when you hit Xin Zhao 3, you're going to want to put the Bramble Vest, the Dragon's Claw, and the Titan's Resolve on him. What this does, it increases his MR and armor to a point where he can't be killed. And then, whenever he ulties, the Protector buff gives him a 30% shield. 
Since his ulti or spell is very spammable, he keeps getting the shield and no enemy unit will kill him and then he just eventually slowly but surely wipes out the enemy team. Now for the side carry of this build is going to be the Rakan. Essentially you're going to want to build a Thief's Glove on him. He works well with a lot of items, but if you can't get that Thief's Glove, I recommend Morello, Rabadon's AP damage items, as well as Spear of Shojin as it allows him to get his ulti off a lot more. Just a quick side note, if you do manage to get tears, if you do manage to get Negatron cloaks, you can try and build Chalice of Favors on the Sonar. I'll just put it on right now. The reason why I didn't put it on earlier is because it is not a priority. It is not something that you want to go for straight away because she's not the main carry. However, it does help out a lot when you do get these Zin Zhao items already on the Zin Zhao and the Rakan as it allows them to spam the ultis more. As well as allows to spam Nika ulti more, Jarvan ulti more. It just allows the whole team to spam their ultis more which is really essential in protectors as protectors get a 30% shield every time they use their ulti. So make sure you have that in mind but it is not a priority. Now for the last comp of this guide, we are going to be looking at the Blade Bros composition. This consists of Master Yi and Yasuo as your carry, 3 Rebels with the Master Yi, Yasuo and Sonor, as well as 4 Chrono with the Blitzcrank, the Shen, the Wukong and the Thresh. Now the way this comp works is essentially it has a QSS and a Rage Blade on the Master Yi. What this does, the QSS stops him from getting CC'd and the Rage Blade allows him to auto attack a lot. And what Master Yi's ulti does is that it heals him, but it also allows his auto attack to do massive amounts of true damage. And the chrono buff keeps on boosting his attack speed throughout the fight. And by the time it gets to the end of the fight, Master Yi will be doing heaps of massive true damage with his auto attacks and the chrono will just keep buffing him and buffing him till eventually he's unstoppable. Now, as I said before, the main carry of this build is the Master Yi. You're definitely going to need a QSS, which stops him from getting CC'd for the first 15 seconds of the fight, and Rage Blade, which keeps boosting his auto attack speed with every auto attack. Now for the third item on Master Yi, you're going to run a defensive item that is optimized for the enemy teams you're going to be versing. The first item I'm going to recommend is a Bramble Vest, which stops him from getting one shot by Shakers and Jins, which is really prominent in the meta right now due to Darkstar. The second item I would recommend is Dragon's Claw, which is good against magic comps such as Star Guardians or maybe other Sorcerer comps. The third item I would recommend is Warmogs, which is specifically good against Void Brawlers, as Void Brawlers do true damage, so the way you counter this is by maxing out your HP as much as possible. For the side carry of this build, which is the Yasuo, what you're going to want to build on him is the GA, which allows him to get revived and maybe proc off one more ulti. And then on top of that, you're going to want Hand of Justice, which allows his ulti to heal him for insane amounts. Just a quick note, make sure when you go this build that no one else is going it, as it is essential to 3-star the Yasuo and 3-star the Master Yi to place in the top 4. If someone else is going it and you're re-rolling for these units, it is unlikely that you're going to be able to 3-star them. So just make sure you keep that in mind. Thanks for making it to the end of the video guys, it really means a lot. If you enjoyed or learned something from the video, feel free to like it. And if you want updates and notifications on my future content, feel free to hit the bell and subscribe. Cheers and I'll see you in the next video.